Hey crafters, Lisa from Fun Stuff Crafts. So glad you joined me again today. So for the past couple weeks, I've been telling you about the block party that our local Habitat for Humanity is having. Well, it's next weekend. So what I'm trying to do is finish up on some of the projects that I'm either going to be taking up there and donating um, for their raffle or things I'll be working on and showing people how to do some upcycling. So a couple weeks ago, I posted a blog post and a YouTube video on some of my thrift store shopping. One of the ways I get inspired to create. During that one, I showed you guys some covered doors or some boards that I picked up. So what I've got for you today is this first one is I turned it into a family sign. So this was a covered door. And if you stay tuned to this video, I'm actually going to show you how to make this sign. The other one was a board that I picked up and I turned this one into a coat rack. And so I thought it was really cute, the saying, it's so good to be home, his, hers, and for the puppy. So same process as I'm going to show you in the tutorial on the family sign. The only difference here is I did add the um, coat hooks. Um, just went up to um, Walmart and picked those up. And then the other thing I did on this one is this board is really heavy. And so I went ahead and used my drill and I drilled in three holes. Um, and so the person that gets this will have no problem um, putting this up on their wall. I did put the whole 16 inches apart because that is your normal stud um, separation in your walls. So give me a few minutes to get my camera angle changed and I am going to show you how to make the family sign. So for my family sign, I'm going to start out with a cupboard door I picked up at Habitat for Humanity. And I am going to paint this cupboard door a two-tone color. So I'm going to use a gray chalk paint for the outside or the border and then a white acrylic for the center part. So here you can see I'm just putting on my white acrylic onto a palette. And I'm actually using my chalk paintbrush. And basically all I'm trying to do here is to get that center portion, get a really nice cover to it with the white paint. These are a shaker-like cupboard door, and so it does have that raised panel on the outside, and the middle of the cupboard door is sunken. So it's really important to get in to all of the little crevices um, as you're putting on that first coat of white paint. This cupboard door happens to be 35 and a half inches by 14 and a half inches. So I thought it was a really nice size door to do a sign for. So I had a lot of fun coming up with a design to be putting on this or the wording to do it, but Prior to being able to put the wording on, you have to prep the board. So I always like to give it a couple coats. And so you can see here, I'm just really trying to get a nice cover um, of the white. And you can see I'm getting it around the, the outside part and I'm not worried about that because I am gonna put a base coat of white all the way um, around the, the border also prior to putting on that coat of the gray for the border. So you can see I'm just working through um, getting all of this um, covered very well and I actually need to add a little bit more paint here um, because it is just soaking in the paint. I really apologize for some reason my webcam is wanting to autofocus um, quite a bit so I need to get working on that so I apologize and hopefully you guys can get through this video um, without being too bothered by that autofocus piece. So I'm just putting on another coat here and then the next um, step I'm going to do is I'm going to move on to the um, border of it and just give a nice um, coat of white all the way around. So I'm going to go ahead and fast forward through that next section so you don't need to sit and watch me paint. You get the idea of what I'm trying to do here. So 
So the next step I'm going to do is I let the cupboard door dry and now I am adding on that second coat of white to the center of the door. So just giving it a good um, finish. So I'm just applying some more of the white acrylic paint here and I am going to fast forward through this section also because all it is is a second coat of white. But I did want to show you that I do let the drawer dry and then I do add on that second coat. So the next step is going to be adding our border on and this is where I'm going to use the chalk paint that I have which is a nice gray color and I am going to apply that to the outside of the cupboard door and you guys will notice again I'm not using any painters tape as I am doing this. The cupboard door is raised as I've said in other videos when I paint this type of door and I just work very carefully um, and work through it without painting, excuse me, without taping any of the boards. So I am making sure that I get the um, kind of the side or the border part there um, of the door because as it's hanging you're going to be able to see that outside edge. So I'll make sure I get that and then I'm going to work all the way around the cupboard door with the gray. And this gray is kind of a subtle gray. It just gives it a nice highlight um, um, for the sign. So that's why I chose. And you'll see in future steps that the lettering I'm using is a gray. And so that is one of the reasons why I chose to do a gray border around the door. So once again, this is just me painting and I am going to fast forward through this one also um, and we'll move on to the next step here real soon. So once you get the border completely painted, the next step I like to take is to take some polyurethane and I'm going to put a finish on the cupboard door. Now the reason why I do this is it helps with applying the vinyl in our next step. So I'm just going to protect the paint with a coating of this polyurethane and I'm using a water-based polyurethane and it has a milky color to it. It's a crystal clear matte, but when it dries, it dries completely clear. So I'm using a Verathane Brown brand ultra polyurethane, water-based. So I'm just putting it, um, a good coat of it on the cupboard door. And again, this just helps when I go apply the vinyl in our next step. Okay, so we're finally ready to add the vinyl transfer. Now I did this vinyl transfer on my Cricut earlier and I thought the saying was cute. Family, a little bit of crazy, a little bit of loud, and a whole lot of love. So since I've already um, done it on my Cricut and I've actually cut it out and I weeded it, the next step is to apply vinyl transfer. Now this transfer I get from 651 Vinyl. It's my favorite transfer tape. It's the blue transfer. And so I've cut this piece a little large, but it still works. And I find that if you just roll it out as I'm doing here and not take it all off of the transfer tape at one time, it actually works out much better. Now I also find that it works out really well if I turn over my um, transfer now 
and I use my little, I call it my varnishing tool, um, my little tool to really press hard my image onto the transfer tape. And so that's what I'm doing right here, is just making sure that it's on. And then I'm going to flip it over, um, just to double check it, and then I'm going to peel from the back, and you can see that my image has transferred onto the tape. And we are just going to pull that all the way out. And every once in a while, right there, a letter decides it doesn't want to stick, but you just reinforce it and keep pulling. So here we are. And again, I apologize. I can see that my webcam is wanting to auto-focus. But I've got it all transferred. Now what I like to do at this point is fold my image in half especially when it's this large of an image and I'm going to crease and find where the center of the image is. Always make sure when you lay it back down on your mat that you're not putting the sticky side down. Um, that could create quite a mess for you. So I'm just going to put a little cut with my scissors in there so I know where the center of my image is. And then I'm going to get my tape measure and I am going to measure my cupboard door so I know where the um, center of it is also. So here I've got my board out, making sure I don't stick the image to the back of it. Lay it there, and then I am just going to take my sewing measuring tape. I find that to be the easiest and find the center of my cupboard door. And as I am doing that, I'm just trying to mark it with something. And then I will take my transfer tape and very carefully find that center and line it up with that little cut I have. And then very carefully, and you wanna be really carefully when you're laying this, because you don't want it to stick too soon to your board. And I like to lay my center first, and then I normally do one side using my hand to flatten it out, and then I let one side fall first, and then I will do the second side. So you can see here, I am just smoothing on the start of the saying, and then I will do the same with the finish of the saying. Now the next part takes a little bit of patience, I'll be perfectly honest with you. You need to make sure that all of your lettering is coming off of that transfer tape. So it does take a little bit of time to get that part all done. And I just very carefully am bringing up, and as I do it, I'm pushing back down on it to make sure that my vinyl is staying down. Like I say, this does take patience. It took me a little while to get this saying down. It looks absolutely beautiful once it is down, um, especially those smaller letters. Um, those ones sometimes you really struggle with. You have a sense of accomplishment when letters lay off, off of the transfer tape like they're supposed to, like those first letters did. <laughs> but you can see that I just work through this and make sure. And I find using my tools sometimes really helps. Um, and in this case, I've got such a large saying. Some people would do this in two pieces of transfer tape. I wanted to make sure I kept my wording spaced exactly like I had designed it and cut it out with my Cricut Maker. And so that is why I have it all on one piece of transfer tape. So again, takes a little bit of patience and you can see as I work through here, I'm just working each one of those letters to make sure that they come off and they are adhering to the board. So once again, I'm going to fast forward through this um, and you can see as I continue to finish pulling off the transfer tape.
you can see the finish sign. I've got all of the letters off of the transfer tape. I'm just double checking um, to make sure everything is adhered very nicely. And um, in some cases, you may have some little air bubbles. And so I'm just very carefully looking um, for those on each one of my letters. And you may find I've got a little bit of a bump in the swirl of the F. And so I'm just very carefully picking up, and you can't always do this with all letters, but this one's got a nice swoosh to it that I'm literally just picking it up and I'm resealing it. And that's the way I took care of that little um, air bubble. So the family saying is on the sign and I think it turned out really, nice. really, and here it is. So our last step is to put a top coat of the same polyurethane that we used before we put down the vinyl decal. I like to do this just to protect it. It doesn't necessarily need to be done, I used 651 permanent vinyl on this project, but when something's hanging up, it makes it just a nice finish to it, I think, and it just protects that vinyl. It also makes it easy to dust, um, and so that's why I like to use that same clear um, water-based polyurethane finish. Now this is an indoor finish. It's a matte finish and so I'm just going to coat um, across all of my saying and then I'm also going to give the border, the gray area, also a coat of the urethane. So just the whole project is just going to have that one coat of polyurethane and then we are going to be completed with our sign. Thanks so much for joining me for this tutorial on turning a cupboard door into a sign. I've made a couple different ones um, over the past couple weeks getting ready for the upcoming block party at our local Habitat for Humanity and this will be one of the items that I have there. So once again, if you liked what you saw today, please subscribe to my channel and click on the bells down below and you'll be alerted each time I post a new video. Thanks for joining Fun Stuff Crafts.